Emerging science is revealing yet another solid reason for the global warming of the 20th century. We are all familiar with the effects of an El Nino, or its cooler sister, La Nina. An El Nino forms when the tropical middle and far eastern Pacific Oceans warm significantly, causing major warming in Earth's climate. Joseph Dialio, founding meteorologist of the Weather Channel, explains how the Pacific Decadal Oscillation, or the PDO, works. Well, it turns out that ocean temperatures in the Pacific change not only just in the tropics, but on a whole basin basis that are multi-decadal in nature. In other words, they persist for multiple decades at a time. That's called the Pacific Decadal Oscillation. One mode of the Pacific, Pacific Decadal Oscillation, called the uh, warm mode, favors warm water in the eastern tropical Pacific, therefore favors more El Ninos. And we wind up with three times as many El Ninos as La Ninas. That's been the case from 1979 to 1998, and we didn't indeed have a dominance of El Ninos. Since El Ninos lead to global warmth, that contributed to the warming of the global temperature. If the warm cycle of the PDO causes more El Ninos and a warmer climate, what causes the PDO to switch between warm and cool cycles? I took one of the main modes of natural climate variability called the Pacific Decadal Oscillation, and I just asked the question, is it theoretically, theoretically possible that this PDO, we call it the PDO, also changes global cloudiness? And I took a simple climate model and found out that it was theoretically possible and then I went to the satellite data. We now have seven and a half years of, of NASA satellite data that can tell us how the clouds on the Earth are changing. And I compared each year what the PDO was doing to the amount of clouds. And it was the exact same relationship the model said could explain most of the global warming we've seen in the last hundred years. The PDO isn't the only effect the ocean has on climate. The Atlantic Basin also has cycles known as the Atlantic Multidecadal Oscillation, or the AMO. In the Atlantic, too, uh, there is a multidecadal oscillation. And like the Pacific, it's a full basin oscillation where the Atlantic, on a, on a, uh, a time scale that averages about 60 to 70 years, goes from warm in the, in the tropics and the far north Atlantic to cold in those locations. When it's warm, it favors more hurricanes, uh, and it also favors general warmth in the continental areas in the northern hemisphere. And when it's cold, less hurricanes and more general coolness. It is clear that the PDO and the AMO have a major effect on Earth's temperature, primarily through cloud formation. Is the cloud formation the result of ocean circulation or of solar cycles, as we've already described? Or is it a combination of both? Scientists just don't know yet. Regardless, the PDO and the AMO are strongly correlated with Earth's temperature. I found that actually a very good correlation of the, the combined ocean warming and cooling cycle and the temperatures. Uh, it's, a, it's a strong correlation that helped explain the, the warming from the tw 20s up into the, through the 30s, the cooling from the 40s to the 70s, and the warming to, to the late 90s, and now the more recent cooling. What about the role that carbon dioxide, or CO2, plays in the Earth's climate? Is any warming being caused by human-generated carbon dioxide? While we have seen that solar and ocean effects explain 75 to 85 percent of Earth's temperature variation in the last 100 years, carbon dioxide only explains 44 percent of the warming. CO2 may play a role, but it's very small.